Aaron Schwartz, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks. Now that you've seen the theory behind Creative Commons, it's time to show you some of the practice. So when you come to, your, come to our website here, and you go to Choose License, it gives you this list of options, it explains what it means, and you fill out three simple questions. Do you want to require attribution? Do you want to allow commercial uses of your work? Do you want to allow modifications of your work? So then you hit Select a License, The server sends you back exactly what those mean. Tells you what license it thinks fits best to those requirements. Tells you what all those requirements mean. And then lets you go on and gives you this third and final page that tells you, yay, you've won. <laughs> gives you this little bit of HTML that you can put on your website or a little bit of text you can put at the bottom of something you've written that's not on the web. And lets you describe to people that you've put it under the license put it on your Creative Commons license. You also get this bit of what we call the machine readable license. It's in a format called RDF, and I'm going to explain a little more about exactly what that format is and what it does. With luck. So, what are these machine readable license? What's this semantic web? Is my computer going to curl up with a good license over the weekend? For better or worse, we don't have computers that can read licenses and understand English, but we do have a variety of tricks for making our documents more useful. When we send email, we put the people we want in a special field, so that even if the computer can't understand the message itself, it still knows who to send it to. Or when we add information to a database, we carefully tell the computer which part is which. This is my first name, this is my last name, and so on. The semantic web extends this idea to the web. What if our web pages contain the same cues about the structure? RDF is the format we use for the structured or machine-readable information. It opens up some interesting possibilities. We can help different programs talk to each other, reducing the need to copy information by hand. Imagine a world where everything had embedded RDF. When you buy your plane ticket, the computer can take details from your flight itinerary and add them to your calendar. You can drag a friend's top 10 songs list onto your music player to have it obtain songs for you automatically. And we can also build more powerful search engines. Right now, you can only... Right now, you can only ask search engines one question. What pages have these words in them? Don't. When pages include RDF metadata, you can ask more advanced questions like, what's the temperature in California? And the results of the search will be available in RDF, so programs can use the information themselves. An alarm clock program can also display the current weather. A collage-making program could use only photos that it had permission to redistribute. Finally, the information can be aggregated across the whole web. The program could download all the top 10 song lists, and with the help of a pricing guide in RDF, collate the cost of buying the most popular albums. I think it's an exciting future, and I hope you do too. It's going to be hard work, but we have to start somewhere. That's why when you choose a license on our website, we give you this bit of RDF to stick on your web page. Programs can help you find stuff automatically with these, and they can also help you find stuff that you want to use by taking your requirements into account. Hopefully, by spreading these around the web, we can promote interest in the broader semantic web and help kickstart its development. I hope you'll join us and get creative. <laughs>